And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith in the Victory Church. Uh, my 80s radio voice. We're so glad to have you tonight. And um, God is good. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, we want to um, get into our Wednesday Night Bible Study here. We're going to start uh, teaching on some faith foundations. Um Look at four passages of scripture that lay out here. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Um, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith, or his, shall live by his faith. Romans 1, 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, 11. But this, no, but though no, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And then Hebrews ten thirty eight, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Praise God. And so we have here four passages of scripture, basically um, quoting or stating the same phrase. In each of these passages, maybe just a, a, a slight change in verbiage. But in the end, it's the just shall live by faith. The just, the righteous. Um, in some translations, we actually word it this way. My righteous ones shall live by faith. Those that are, called, those that are born of God shall, shall, shall live by faith. We've been called by God to a faith walk. And... Um, by his spirit, when we were born again, we entered into this life of faith. For by grace are you saved through, I mean, by faith are you saved through grace. By grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is the work of faith in our life. Praise God. We start there, and we live there. Hallelujah. And um, that's what God's called us to. God's a God of faith. He is a faith God. By faith, he created the worlds. And so this is how we are to live. Now, listen, I think, you know, if, if the Bible said four times that the just shall live by love. You know, then everybody, we would preach millions of billions of sermons on love. And we and a lot is preached on love and not to demean that in any way, shape or form. Um, if, the, if the word said the just shall live by tithing, then we would, you know, this many times. But it doesn't. The, uh, the thing that God said in his word four times, that how we're to live by, is that the just shall live by faith. And so it is a subject that bears study. It is a subject that bears re repetitive study. Um, if we're going to live by it, it's a good thing to be thoroughly versed in the subject of faith from Scripture because this is how we're supposed to live. Amen? Now, I know faith works by love. We'll, we, we'll, we'll cover some of those things. But what I'm trying to say is it is not a subject you can kind of go, well, all we need is love. Well, that's just not true. That's just not true. Um, that That is a... Not even an oversimplification of Scripture. That is a misrepresentation mis uh, of Scripture. We do need more than love. We need to live by faith. And um, we need to have good works. Uh, you know, show me your faith without the works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Um, so to misrepresent the Bible in such a simplistic form does damage. Well, if I just love people, that's, all, no, that's just not true. And um, so, although love is important, don't, don't misconstrue what I'm saying there. Uh, it is those statements we make in the church that leave an impression of something that's just not true, that people will formulate <clears throat> a, a mindset or an opinion or a, a way of doing things by that is incorrect and doesn't uh, really have us walking the way God should have us walk. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All righty. Go ahead and share our service with everybody. And let's look at this. Now, faith operates 
in two veins or two facets. Faith, uh, having um, faith towards or faith in God. We, we oftentimes we refer to this as trusting God. Okay, faith towards or faith in God. And then using or operating in the faith of God. Okay. In our faith walk, it's not just that we live in faith towards God. We live by the faith of God. We function by faith. So there is the faith towards God. And there is the faith that we live. Um, we live our lives out with the faith of God. Praise the Lord. Um, Philippians 3, 9 states, And being found in him, and not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. He hears this is the faith towards or in God. The righteousness which is from God by faith. And um, this, notice it here, there's a faith towards God, but it's a faith that comes from God. Hallelujah. The scripture says, and, I, and we'll get to that at some point, actually, you know, that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Everyone has been granted or a measure of faith, or the, actually the measure. Some people don't get a little bit more. Some folks get a little bit less. Um, it's what we do with the faith that we get that matters. We all get the same number of muscles, okay? It's what we do with them that determines how strong and how big and how powerful they are. Um, glory to God. <clears throat> so how do we get faith? Well, Hebrews 11.6 says that, um, shows us that God demands faith. They that come to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Talking about faith. Let's look, if you will, into the, uh, the um, eighth chapter or the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. And I, I kind of semi misquoted, didn't fully quote that scripture. He, um, Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith is it impossible to please him. For they that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Romans chapter um, 10, starting in verse 8, we read this. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Notice the word of faith which we preach. Glory to God. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or as some translations will state, and you can bear this out, um, that Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the confession, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of uh, 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 how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed thy report? That's Isaiah. 
Um, so then, so then, so then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where cometh is a, could be better stated, accompanies. <coughs> faith accompanies the hearing of the word of God. So important to hear the word. Um, this is why a lot of times you'll hear me say things and, and you may think you're being a little harsh you know, that we don't need another um, Sunday morning um, inspirational statement of how wonderful you are and what you can, you know, how great. If it's just psychological babble, the word of God is what produces faith. Now, if we're encouraging people with the word, great. Why? Because faith produces, the word produces faith. Or it increases faith, it develops faith in our life. So important to um, know that, you know, Bible even talks about our exceeding growing faith. The faith we've been dealt can be developed, can be matured, can grow. Hallelujah. And one of the things that nurtures and helps that is the word of God. Faith accompanies, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, with, how do people get saved? How do we get people saved? Well, they need to hear the word. Faith has to come for people to believe. We, we don't need archaeological. We, we think if we get the Shroud of Turin and bring it out and show the carbon dating and the, you know, the imprint of the image on there, they say that looks like Jesus, um, that's going to win people to the Lord. He didn't say go show them the Shroud of Turin. He said go preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Go preach the gospel. Praise God. Why? Because it has the power to bring men to salvation. Um, Ephesians chapter 2. Look over there if you will. Now, it's a Wednesday night Bible study. Probably be good to have your Bible with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. By grace, you say, through faith. See? Well, all we need is grace, 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 grace. Well, yes. Yeah, but grace is received through faith. They're, they're, they're not, um, somehow or another, we, we, we kind of want to separate um, the ingredients and think we're going to get the whole when it takes all of it put together. Well, I'm a faith person. I'm a grace person. I'm a love person. You need all of it. All of it needs to be operating. All of it needs to be functioning in our lives. Praise the Lord. It's not, it's not an either or thing. It's all of thing. It's in every part of it. Amen. Glory to God. Now, according to this verse, hallelujah. Amen. We've, that we found... Um, earlier when we talked about, you know, that we confess Jesus as Lord and uh, believe in our heart he's raised from the dead, we shall be saved up in Romans. Um, there are three things that we have to do. We have to confess him, we have to believe, and then we accept, you know, through faith, the work of Christ. When we look at he, Acts chapter 11, uh, and they... Uh, when he, the man was seeking the Lord, the angel appeared to him, said, go call for Simon, uh, Peter, one Simon, surnamed Simon, um, or one Simon concerning Peter. Uh, he's praying, and he'll come share, you, share with you the, the gospel, the truth. The angel couldn't preach the gospel to him. Uh, it had to be done through a man preaching the word. Okay? So we're called to preach the word. And so that's why it's so important. Mark 11, I mean, not Mark 11, Mark 16. You say the word Mark, and it's hard not to go right straight to Mark 11. Uh, it's, it's a habit of going there. <coughs> but 
But Mark 16, verses 15, um, <coughs> it says, <coughs> excuse me. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, or probably better stated, exercise authority over demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, it's important that we realize our mission in the church is not to try to be cute. You know, we're not, we're not going to get you um, come to church and you know, join our church and, you know, we'll, we'll count that as getting you into the kingdom. The master said you must be born again. We must preach salvation and messages that demand repentance and turning towards God. Because that's what the word says. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you'll be, you and your house will be saved. It is when we preach the word and tell and share with the word people what the scripture says about their spiritual state, about um, what God has done to alleviate their state of being lost and the provision he's made for them to be saved. When we preach the word, amen, when we preach the word that men can believe and accept the work of Christ. Because faith comes. Faith comes when we preach the word. Now when we preach our opinion. Or we preach a church doctrine. Or we preach come up here and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sprinkle you with water and you'll be saved. Or if you take the communion table you'll be saved. Um, that's not what the word says. The Bible says confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, repent in the name of the Lord Jesus and be baptized. How, it's so important that we preach what the word says so that faith can come so that people can respond in faith. Amen. And so he, in this great commission, what he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, People think that saying we're going to preach the gospel means we never say anything bad. Like, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. That's not the gospel. Yes, it, it, it's part. Why? Because you're telling people what the word says is their state and their destiny. And then you give them the solution, the way out, as it were, the way to escape that destiny. So we got to locate them, tell them what's going on, tell them how they don't, they can avoid that, and then give them the truth about God's redemptive plan so they can receive that. That's the, the gospel is the whole. It's not just um, you get to go to heaven. And so we can't ever say that your people go to hell. Jesus did. Hello. So when we're preaching the gospel, doesn't mean there's nothing ever stated about the, the negativity or the, the state that a person is in. We're, we're, we're just simply unveiling what that is, then unveiling God's solution to that. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. Here's your action. Gospel will include all of that. Because until you know what the problem is, you can't apply the solution to it. Hello? Hello? Can I get a thumbs up out there from our wonderful viewers? Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us, by the way. Um, 
So faith comes for salvation by preaching. You must be born again. Giving all the things. What the word says about that. That the loving God saw you in your lost state. Saw you bound by the enemy. Saw you destined for hell. And with great compassion and love sent forth his son. To bear your sin. And raise him up from the dead. So that and raise him up for your justification. And has now provided a means, a solution to your sin problem. That now that you know what, this, what, the, what your, your problem is, what the solution is, you can apply it by accepting Jesus through faith, by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, and be born again, be saved. You must preach in the gospel. How do people get healed? See, somehow or another, we, we got over to different subjects in the Bible, and all of a sudden it became a hocus-pocus, you know, why zoo wham wham hope it happens look if, if you will over into Acts chapter 11 Acts chapter 11 looking down to verse 7 <clears throat> Forgive me. Acts 14. I was like, why? That, Acts 11 don't have anything to do with what I'm talking about. Acts 14, verse 7. <clears throat> we could back up just a verse or so. Let's see here. Um, verse 6. And they were aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derby. Um, Cities of Laos, um, Laconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. Stop. There they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man. See, the gospel is inclusive of so many things of God's desire to deliver man from. Okay. James says, "Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the." They did say, "See, some people get so caught up with never being negative. Well, we can't talk about people being sick. Then how are we going to call for the elders of the church and anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith raise them up if we don't acknowledge somebody sick? How are we going to bring people out of going to hell?" If they don't know and acknowledge they're lost and on their way to hell. Okay? We have to identify the problem, present the solution, and then have people act on that. And there they preach the gospel. And a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving he had faith to be healed. Now stop. How would he have gotten faith to be healed? It's not a trick question. How would he have gotten faith to be healed? Well, Romans 10, 17, we read earlier. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He must have preached in that gospel message that the sick, that the infirmed, that the crippled can be healed by faith in God. That word produced a faith in here, and when Paul saw him, he perceived he had faith to be healed. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And said upright, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and he walked. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He stood up and began to walk. 
by preaching what the word says. Hallelujah. Now, Romans calls it the word of faith. It's called by others, uh, uh, call it throughout the New Testament, the gospel. The gospel will produce faith. Because if you're preaching the word, it's going to produce faith. Hello? Well, what did Paul do? Well, when he preached the gospel, he perceived the man had faith to be healed. And then he told the man to stand up right on his feet. The man did three things. One, he heard Paul preach. He had faith to be healed, and he leaped and walked. The man was healed by faith in the word. The man was healed by faith in the word. The word of God produced faith in him. He acted on that faith and was made whole. So that's why it's so important to preach the Bible. We don't need um, um, sermonizing of an opinion or an idea or an ideal. We need the word of God. Because if men and women are going to live by faith, if they're going to receive by faith, if their lives are going to be governed by faith, and the word produces faith, then they need the word. Now, you can preach faith along a subject line and find scriptures that cover that line of whatever, salvation, healing, finances, deliverance, you know, prosperity, um, overcoming all these things we find scriptures of faith that, that, that scriptures that deal with the solution to those problems and we give that so that faith comes so they can accept and, and live in the liberty that, that was provided through scripture in those arenas glory to God hallelujah um, in Acts chapter 8 Y'all out there? Hallelujah. This, sometimes I wish we were in a Zoom Bible studies so I could hear y'all say something back. <laughs> it's, instead of waiting for a um, couple of hand claps to go across the screen. All right, Romans, I mean, um, Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Then Philip went down to Samaria and preached. Christ unto them. Now here, the gospel is called preaching Christ. Hello? It's called preaching Christ. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice uh, came out with many that were possessed and many were taken with palsies uh, and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. See, the people gave, gave, one, gave one accord to the things which he preached. Praise God. So healing and miracles took place because of preaching of the preaching of, the, of Christ. He was Jesus, of Christ, he's the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. What's the word? It's the, it, it's the, it's the gospel. It's, it's uh, the, the word of faith. See, so these terms are used interchangeably in reference to what we're preaching. But in the end, it is the preaching of the word of God, <clears throat> the gospel, the word of faith, the preaching of Christ that produces faith in an individual to act on that word and receive the answer to whatever the problem or situation in their life is that's contrary to what God desires for them to have. <clears throat> Glory to God. Look, if you will, in the Luke chapter 6. And he came down with them, verse 17, I'm sorry, verse 17, Luke chapter 6, verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. Sidon, underline this next phrase, which came to hear him. 
and to be healed of their diseases. Came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Glory to God. That's why it's so important that we preach the word. Honestly, this is why our worship needs to be word-based. Not feeling-based. Here I wander like a beggar in the, in, the, in the swamps of despair. Dear Lord, you know, I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Oh, dear Lord. We even got songs that ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. Please let me sing in the choir. And everybody just says, Amen, Amen. That, that'll produce faith in you. Uncle Charlie couldn't sing. They wouldn't let him sing. He died, and he got to go to the heaven in the choir. Oh, that was, a, that, that was probably somebody was mad at somebody and wrote a song about it, and it became a hit. Please let me sing in the choir, in the choir. That ain't going, you don't need to sing that in church. It ain't going to help you none. Probably just make you mad that Uncle Charlie didn't ever get to sing in the choir. But if you ever heard it, you might have been happy. You might have been glad. Saying, thank God he didn't get to sing in the choir. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Can I get a hand clap or something out there? It's, it's like um, crickets in here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When we talk about salvation, being saved, uh, Dr. Schofield says in his Bibles that both the Hebrew and Greek words for salvation imply the idea of deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and soundness. When we preach the gospel, it has the power to deliver, to save, to pres uh, preserve, to heal, and to make sound or make whole. It's so important. This is why we, we stress um, the importance of, of the Bible, Bible study. Look at Acts chapter 19. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, our upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. And he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And, um, and then he said, to them, what were you baptized? Remember, because Jesus said, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He, he gets there and finds people who are, who are disciples. And they say, we never even heard of the Holy Ghost. And they said unto John's baptism. And then he said, but John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto uh, people that they should believe on him that should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, it's probably a good chance that these were John the Baptist disciples and not true believers who were waiting for the coming Messiah. And when he shared with them that the one that John was said was coming was Jesus, they got baptized in the name of Jesus. Hello? Amen? And, um, and the Bible says this. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, look, so he's told them, you know, the one you were waiting for has come. His name is Jesus. And man, they were ready. They were looking for him because they'd already been told he was coming. And so they all got baptized in the name of Jesus. And then Paul lays hands on them. And the Holy Ghost came on them. They prophesied. They spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about 12. Hallelujah. And you know, you get baptized in the Holy Ghost by faith. Amen. And so he, he, he uh, pronounced the way more perfectly. They received Jesus and got baptized with the Holy Ghost. So no matter what you need from God, the way we receive is by faith. 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so as we meditate in the words, we study the words, we teach the word. It becomes incumbent upon us to be aware as, as we grow in the Lord, as we continue to grow in the Lord. This is something that um, you will forever grow in. Um, I can tell you, you never have it all. You never have the full scope of it. There's always more to learn about the things of God and about the Bible. Uh, we've, we've already shared this. Sunday, we had, we had a joint service with, with the church where we're meeting. Um, that They're letting us use their facility. And they had a guest speaker, so we joined our service with him, them and their guest speaker. And um, he, he taught a message on the authority of the believer. And I'll be honest with you, I've heard Dad Hagen teach it. I've heard Kenneth Copeland teach it. I've taught it. And he shared something Sunday morning I had never seen. Never seen it. It was there the whole time. But I had never seen it. 40 years. And I'd never seen it. I'm going to say 42, but 40 years of the ministry. Um, yeah. He shared... In a scripture, two words. He said, these are probably the most important two words in the Bible that you'll ever read. And I'm thinking, okay. And I looked, and then it, my eyes were open. I thought, why have I never seen that? It's been there all along. I've taught the subject and taught it well. And it's not like, you know, her brother Hagen teach it, taught it well. Brother Copeland teach it, taught it well. A lot of rel help. Rel but there was a new learning moment. That took me to a different place in understanding on the subject of the authority of the believer. Hello? So we're always learning. So going back and reading the same things again, going back and studying the same things again, going back and feeding on the same things again, is not a futile process. And you may think, well, yeah, I've heard it all before. You may have heard it all before, but you may not have seen it all before. In other words, you may not have gotten the revelation of it all before. Or there's a newer place to go that deepens your faith, that deepens your walk. Um, trying to remember which, which preacher it was uh, in England. Uh, it may have been Finney, but I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure that it was. They had a had a had a um, had a mission, uh, an orphanage in England. Uh, no, it was it was Charles something. Uh, it wasn't Charles Wesley, but it was Charles something. Um, I, th I believe. Anyway, um, he he made this statement. At, he said years, 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 maybe 30, 40 years after, maybe 40, 50 years of the ministry. He said. He's sharing with some people. He said, when I first started this orphanage, it took all the faith I had in God to believe, you know, for $100. He says, but now after all these years of serving God and studying the word and growing in him, I can believe God today as easy to get a million dollars as I could then for 100 he had developed his faith. Did you, did you try? You were trying to figure out who it was, George Muller. George Muller. You see, rehearsing the same scriptures, studying the same subject, growing more in these same things, a deeper insight coming, and now years later, he could the same effort of faith he was putting out. It was just deeper. It was stronger. It was more mature than he was when he first started out. Could produce a million where before it produced maybe a hundred. Hallelujah. Um, ministry friend of ours, Mark Brzee, used to, has actually probably has still has it on his um, in his his uh, collection of sermons. Um, 
getting your faith, uh, stretching your faith with socks to cars. Hallelujah. You know, uh, some people going out trying to believe God for a Bentley and they can't even believe God for a new pair of socks. <clears throat> um, but, but stay after it. Don't get frustrated. Keep after it. Keep growing. Keep developing. Because it'll get to the point where you can. Go from one place to the other, a higher place. Um, I remember a number of years ago we were um, in our, the church we were in. There was a family there. And bless their hearts. Um, they, were, they were caught in the middle of the charismatic word of faith era where not enough people were fully importing before they exported. Um, I heard Tony Cook, Brother Tony Cook say that a number of years ago. He said, we, you know, don't export what you haven't fully imported. In other words, don't try to, don't go out sharing what you don't really know. Just because you heard the sermon, somebody else preached, and that's what everybody wants to hear, so you're going to try to share it. <clears throat> and too often we did that in that era. We were, oh yeah, that's, that's what everybody's saying, we got to say this. And we didn't even understand what we were talking about. Sometimes like, we didn't even know what we were talking about. But we just, we mimic what they said. Um, you gotta, you've got to import it to, to export it. Amen? And uh, this family, you know, um, owned a restaurant or ran a restaurant. They, they don't, I don't think they owned the building. They were leasing it. And um, came to the church and said, God told us we're going to go on a mission trip. And so they loaded up their car and put, putted Beverly Hillbilly style over to the airport in Raleigh. And I mean, they barely got there, went into the airport, took all the luggage up there and stood in the middle of the terminal for three days. And finally, the airport authority ran them out. But they were saying, God had said go, that they were, you know, he was going to, you know, somebody was going to come buy their tickets to go on this mission trip. Now, this family couldn't even believe God um, to get a car that ran on all the cylinders. Are you here? You've got to develop faith. Unless the gift of special faith is in operation, you have to develop the faith you use on a daily basis. Not saying that you can't get to the place where God has spoken and you go by faith and because, you know, the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Nobody ever showed up with the money. Hello? Amen? Um... I'm believing God for this. Well, well, brother, you hadn't even been able to believe God to, to you know, uh, have enough money to feed your family, but you're believing God for a million dollars. Why don't you start with 25 for the week? An extra $25. You got to develop your faith. You develop your faith by feeding on the word, acting on the word. And let's be real about it. Starting in, in, in a area <clears throat> <clears throat> where you could you can prove it out and it work instead of this high, you know and a lot of people believe in, I'm gonna believe God for me God's dollars because they don't want to work. I tell you your motives will short circuit your faith too. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I, I'm looking for the enthusiasm. Is there any enthusiasm out here? I don't see any enthusiasm out here. Come on, let me let me get some enthusiasm. Or say it's true anyhow, Pastor. Go ahead. I'm still wait I still hadn't seen it show up. Not a hand clap. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you for the courtesy clap, Shannon. Okay. <clears throat> Anytime. All right. Praise the Lord. So next week we'll pick up here and we'll move into um we'll move into what the faith versus hope. There is a difference. Faith and hope are not the same thing. Yes, how can that not be the same thing? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. So they can't be the same thing. They're different. And we'll move into that to next week, praise the Lord, and uh, hallelujah, and, uh, you know, share that. And, and then we'll probably, we probably will get past that a little bit and uh, so forth, but um, glory to God. Uh, so thankful y'all could join us tonight. This is the beginning of the series. It will take us a little while to go through, you know, a few weeks. Hallelujah. But we, want, we just want to encourage you. Um, I know we teach on faith a lot. But the just shall live by faith. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, don't forget to join us on Sunday at 1230. We're back at our 1230 time as we continue ministering on Keepers of the Flame. And uh, it's going to be a good time together. We're, we're, looking, um, we're looking for the Lord to manifest himself and to work in conjunction with the word preached. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, we're just so glad. Amen. Uh, if you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and give your tithe and offering. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll pray for you. And uh, I know that a lot of times I'll come in after the service. But, Father, we bless all those who give electronically right now in the name of Jesus. We bless them. We thank you that heaven's windows are opened unto them and that you empty out blessings on them. They don't have room enough to receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, we want you to know that uh, we love you. We appreciate you. We count you precious in the sight of God. And an honor to be able to come and minister to you at this point on Wednesday nights electronically, but we're glad we're able to do it. And uh, I want to give you these closing words from the First letter of John, chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Until then, be blessed.